Friends, join us. We have a spectacle. The Scottish war epic, Outlaw King, opens with an unbroken tracking shot that sets up the entire Netflix film in nine minutes of cinematic glory. Your IMD Brief breaks down why the filmmakers did it and why it belongs among the most epic tracking shots in film history. Outlaw King could be thought of as a sequel to Braveheart. Beginning with the surrender of Scotland in 1304, the film details the life of Robert the Bruce, played by Chris Pine, his alliance with James Douglas, played by Aaron Taylor Johnson, and his war for Scottish independence against King Edward I and his son, Stephen Delane and Billy Howell, respectively. Now you can accept the surrender. When a storm stalled production, director David McKenzie seized the extra day to refine a 13-minute sequence of four shots into this expertly choreographed violent ballet. Although Chris Pine admitted that he was initially, quote, pissed that he had to reshoot the sequence, the end justified the means. Diplomatically put. The long take has been a filmmaking staple that hit a high point in 1948 when Alfred Hitchcock experimented with creating a film out of what appeared to be a single shot for his 1948 thriller Rope. Since then, filmmakers have been upping the ante of what could be contained on celluloid between a single action and cut. I don't like it anymore. Uh, no, 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 I'm just teasing, just teasing. Uh, you're awful. A number of films like 2002's Russian Ark and 2015's Victoria are literally a single take that tells a feature-length tale. Outlaw King instead uses its first spiraling one -er to set the stage for its story. Orson Welles did the same thing for his Mexican border mystery, Touch of Evil, which Robert Altman would pay homage to in his hilarious Hollywood satire, The Player. The opening shot of uh, Welles' Touch of Evil was six and a half minutes long. Six and a half minutes, Robert? Well, uh, three or four anyway. He set up the whole picture with that one tracking shot. Swashbuckling and fisticuffs also sizzle in a single long take because the choreography has to be so precise and you can't hide any errors with a cut. That's why Pine was, quote, terrified to capture the sword fight with Billy Howell in one fell swoop. How much have you had to drink? Not nearly enough. For more hand-to-hand -hand combat, check out martial artist Tony Jaw's stair-climbing video game combat in The Protector or director Park Chan-wook's masterful hand-to-hammer hit-em-up in Old Boy. <laughs> director Ryan Coogler has made the long take brawl his trademark. From the two-round boxing match that takes you into the ring in Creed, to the 52-card dust-up in Black Panther. <laughs> director David McKenzie made Outlaw King all the more difficult with a fiery finale from a trebuchet, much in the same way that Stanley Kubrick complicated his trench walk in Paths of Glory with mortar explosions, or Andre Tarkovsky, a master of long takes, had to rebuild a house only to burn it down again when the camera stalled while filming the sacrifice. But director Alfonso Cuaron may be the king of complication, spinning Sandra Bullock into outer space for gravity and running Clive Owen through a war zone for children of men. You can add Outlaw King, Children of Men, Rope, and all of our favorite long takes to your watch list. And check out IMDb's Through the Lens episode on director Joe Wright's tracking shots for more cinematic breakdowns.